Well, that's a knackering job. <sighs> Cutting firewood. It's fun for about half an hour, but after that, whoa. Well, anyway, it's um, necessary because winter is just around the corner. We had our first frost this morning. The question is, well, I know you know what this is. It's a pumpkin! Hey, a pumpkin. Yes, it's Halloween. And of course, one has to carve a pumpkin for Halloween. That is our little job this evening, me and Helena. We've got one pumpkin each and we intend to, um, sorry about me squinting, but the sun is right there. Well, I haven't placed the camera in a particularly good position, but never mind, at least I'll be well lit. But do excuse the squinting. So me and Helena are going to carve a pumpkin this evening. We've done it many times. We're old hands at the pumpkin carving. That's for sure. Pumpkins or carved pumpkins also known as Jack O'Lanterns. They came about in the 16th century. Although America seems to have taken over the whole pumpkin thing, it was actually a English tradition originally. It didn't necessarily have to be a pumpkin, of course. It could have been a turnip or any other kind of root vegetable. But obviously a pumpkin is quite practical because it's quite hollow inside anyway so half the job's already done and it's orange so it looks a little bit more kind of scary enough of that i will now um go and change into something less sawdusty and find a scary mask as well to scare helena she's promised me that she's going to wear her vampire dress outfit when we're um carving the pumpkins tonight which should be quite interesting. And the mask I'm gonna wear, it's like a warlock mask, she's actually very scared of, so. <laughs> she's gonna love it. Anyway, let's go and do it. I'll see you in a bit. Ooh. A nice beer, I think, when I finish this. Don't scare me. <laughs> these, this, well, these two are the pumpkins that we're going to use, and it's just a case of carving out, well, cutting the top off of the pumpkin carving out the insides or scooping out the insides actually and uh, and then what we do is we we're gonna put a face carve a face at the front of the pumpkin and then once that's finished we can put a candle inside we can put a candle inside and light it and scare away all the bad spirits because that is actually what a pumpkin was originally designed for it was designed to scare off to scare off all the evil spirits that wander around at this spooky time of year. Anyway. My Bill. Who's Bill? Well, it's Herb. Ah, okay, Bill. Let me just take this Dill. up a second. Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. So just before we start, I'm going to talk about the, the classic, um, I'm going to talk about the classic pumpkin carving tools and scooping tools as well. So first of all, 
Helena. So this is for cutting out there all around there. And for cutting out the face. Cutting out the face, correct. This is for taking off and this is all for taking off all the pumpkin thing you in it. Let, yeah, let me just show them this one. This is, it looks a bit like an ice cream scoop, but it's not. It's a specific pumpkin scooper. If you haven't got one like this, you can actually just use a spoon. Yeah. It works just as well. Well, maybe not quite as well, but it does work okay. And then finally, a knife. Well, I'll get onto the knife in a second. So you've got two other kind of pumpkin saws. And there's something, very, there's something very specific about these particular saws. And that is that they're serrated. Serration is really important because... If, yeah, because that's why you can't make your pop. If, at time. Because if you use a knife, the knife has a tendency to be a little bit uncontrollable when cutting the pumpkin flesh and you're likely to do a lot of damage to the pumpkin that you yeah. didn't intend on doing and potentially doing damage to yourself. A knife has got its use when you carve a pumpkin, but generally a minimal kind of use. Anyway, let's begin. Yeah. <laughs> Does he? Okay. And Helena has started to cut the top of her, her pumpkin. What's important, and I'm just going to correct Helena there as well, is that when you when you cut you need to cut at an angle because if you cut straight down the top will just fall straight into the pumpkin it needs to be a tapered kind of edge so at that kind of angle Helena okay okay carefully with your fingers do you need to hold the pumpkin yes. don't cut my fingers eh Oopsie. and also just as a guide, when you cut the top of the pumpkin, don't make the hole too small because your fingers have actually have got to, to fit in they've, it. They've got to be able to fit inside. Well, I say your fingers, your whole hand. And it isn't the case of just your hand. You're going to be able to scoop. scoop. You need to maneuver inside the pumpkin. So that is why you make such a big, a big top. So once you've completed the tour around the top of the pumpkin, it's now ready to lift off the lid. Normally it's quite an easy, if, ah, there we go. And then inside. Can I, where do I put it? You just put it on the, the, the top there. And you, inside is, this is what, obviously where all the pumpkin seeds are and all the flesh. And what we're gonna try and do today is we're gonna try and save some of the, the actual flesh itself. Um, I'll make a soup out of it uh, later on or, um, or maybe tomorrow. But obviously all the seeds and the, the strangly dangly bits, um, they're all to be taken out and thrown away because, well, ultimately you could replant the seeds actually, but other than that, it, it's it's for the compost heap. Gosh, look at all the seeds that are coming out. It's incredible. <laughs> In the past, Helen, I've actually saved the seeds from the pumpkins and dried them out, and I have planted them before, and they do grow. Well, of course they grow. In fact, pumpkins are very easy plants to grow. They do need a lot of water and they do like a lot of manure or fertilizer as well. But be warned, if you do grow pumpkins, they grow big. The actual plants themselves, you normally get, sort of, I don't know, four, five, six, even up to 10 pumpkins just off one plant. And it just keeps spreading and spreading. What does that feel like, Helena? I don't know. It's like slime. <laughs> it's like Halloween slime. Are you watching where you're filming? And then after that, it's just a case of scooping, but you need to do it relatively... You need to do it in a relatively controlled fashion. Mm -hmm. Because if you take too much of the flesh away, then obviously it makes the pumpkin too weak. But it's surprising, actually, how much the flesh you can take away to be honest. Now, I don't know how well you guys can see this but I'm trying to indicate the best ways to gouge you can gouge either this way or from from side to side and sometimes you need to kind of gouge from the bottom upwards as well. It's tricky. So as the as you it, as I say, it's just a case of you just get your hand inside the pumpkin 
and you just literally kind of twist your wrist and scrape. And as, as the, the wall of the pumpkin gets thinner, you can actually kind of gauge, well I, I must admit I've done this a few times so I kind of know, but if you've never carved a pumpkin before, the more hollow it sounds, the closer it is to being ready, basically. Can you hear me? Can you understand me with this mask? There we go, I think this one, how's this one look? Let me just show it to you. Is that looking kind of yeah. good? Okay, I'm afraid I've had to cheat and I've taken off my warlock mask because it's really annoying, it's too big. So I've, or we have finished emptying the two pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> the next job <clears throat> is to, be there, is to sort these out because we obviously need to scoop these somewhat as well, which I'm going to do quickly. Mm -hmm. now. Daddy? Yes? Are we going to plant dill one day? Dill? Uh, yes, probably. Uh, Why do you say that, Helena? Well, because in the herbs it's a series, I mean, there's anime. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah there's dill, the yeah. dog, well, in the anime is a dog. Right, okay. This is the herbs, is it? Yes. The old 1960s kids program, the herbs, which you've got a DVD off. Have a look at the pumpkin and decide I mean, Helen has found a good place there, but decide the best. Flat. Yeah, decide the best place, kind of flat, not too bumpy, to actually yeah, do the face. And there, as you can see, is actually really good. Yeah, really, really good. So off you go, Helen. So Design there away. will be the eyes. First of all, the eyes there. Okay. I go into the teeth now. Okay, so Helen's made a fantastic job of her pumpkin face. She's just adding some teeth to his mouth. Um, some... Yeah. Just like that, it's okay. okay. And now it's ready to carve. And once you've kind of scribed on your pumpkin with a pen, you, you can, can then begin. Start cutting it. You can start cutting. Let me see you cutting, Alana. How's your cutting doing? Um, I don't quite have to do this side after you. Could you help me, Daddy? Yeah, of course I can help you, darling. As I said to you, we use these. They're like very thin saws, I guess. And they do, they do the job really well, actually. This saw's a bit a uh, little bit bent now from all the years use. I've had the saws quite a while, actually. I think um, I think I bought the saws in the UK when we we're still living in the UK, so that must be well over ten years old. And as you can see, once you've you've cut through, you could just pop out the the morsels of um, of pumpkin. Yeah, mine is a bit bent. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the only thing with these. They're a little bit uh, weak. weak. <laughs> but what I have noticed, though, and I always forget and kind of remember when I start carving a pumpkin each year, is that they remind me of the sea, the seaside. And why they remind me of the seaside is it actually the flesh actually smells of kind of like seaweed and brine and things like that. That's it. That's it. My my saw is broken. Uh. Doing a good job. Mind your fingers, though, eh? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm used to it. So once you've finished cutting out the the eye, the mouth, the nose, etc. It's just a case of pulling out the segments that you've cut. But do remember that you need to push them outwards rather than push them inwards. And they should come out relatively easily. That's the other way. One nose and one mouth. And teeth. 
sometimes just like now you will find that you just have to do a little bit more cutting yeah. because this one's stuck and obviously if you force it out you're likely to break things like the pumpkin's teeth etc and what you can also do is cut it in half which can sometimes make the job easy there we go look at that magic there we go oh it's pretty scary hang on a minute let me just get this i'm worried about this tooth afraid. yeah he doesn't look very happy does he my pumpkin i must admit I'm going to just cut this one a bit more actually because as I say I've got it, I'm scared that the tooth is going to break. There we go. Let's try. Ah! Show me. Now that's a weird one. Excellent. Oh, and the sun's come out as well. That can't be bad, can it? The pumpkins are done, but and we're happy with them, aren't we, Helena? Yes. So what what we need to? There we go. So. So so that this one is my one. Yeah. And this one is Daddy one. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. So what we're going to do now, Helena's going to film me. Take the top off each pumpkin. Okay. And then, hold on. Big hole. <laughs> and then we're going to just, uh, the best kind of candles to use, actually, are these kind of nightlight candles. You can use any type of candle, um, but these are just nice and stable and they sit, sit nice and flat at the bottom of the, the pumpkin. I can see this is going to be a challenge, though. and then once you've done that you just pop the lid back on so there we go our pumpkins are complete <laughs> oh did you know something Helena when what? I was a kid we uh -huh. didn't used to have pumpkins we used to make these out of potatoes of all things <laughs> anyway take care goodbye and thanks for watching the video see you soon